Anthony Padilla was born on September 16, 1987 in Sacramento, California. Anthony's parents were really young when he was born, being only 20 and 22 at the time. His parents' relationship didn't end up working out, so they ended up splitting when he was only 2 years old, but Luckily, it didn't seem to affect Anthony too much as he was so young at the time. Even when he was younger, Anthony always was pretty shy and mentioned that he got really uncomfortable whenever he got compliments, but his mom had a feeling deep down in her that Anthony would grow up to be an actor or a model. To say the least, I think Anthony met her expectations. Anthony was also a nervous kid growing up, which probably was part of why he was so shy too. In sixth grade, Anthony was in science class when he met a new kid named Ian, and on a project they were working on about landfills, they drew flies and poop and garbage everywhere. and had an awesome time doing that project together. Needless to say, they would become good friends after that project, and little did either of them know the extent to what they would accomplish in their time here on YouTube. A year or two after meeting Ian, Anthony's dad ended up getting him his first ever computer, not of course without some skepticism from mom about what a 13 year old might be looking up on a computer, but the dad always comes through for the son and ended up letting Anthony have it anyways. Anthony was a super passionate learner, and when he got to use his own computer, he learned how to make websites, use Photoshop, and edit his own videos. At around this time when Anthony was entering high school, he also mentions that his mom has frequent panic attacks. and. As a result, she was never able to drive a car or leave home all that much when he was growing up. This also manifested itself in Anthony, unfortunately, as we'll see later, but Anthony's grandma would end up driving him to the grocery store so he could get groceries for his family at this point, but she ended up unfortunately passing away when he was 14 so he had to find a new way to get his groceries to provide for his family, including his mom and two younger brothers. One of these ways was through a taxi. Old school, I know. <laughs> this was long before Ubers were around. And Anthony got groceries with a shopping list in one hand and food stamps in the other hand. High school wasn't too bad for Anthony until he turned 15 when he was diagnosed with Hanak Sholan Papura, or HSP for short, which is a disease that causes your immune system to attack its own red blood cells. It causes rashes, horrible joint pain, and vomiting, which caused Anthony to be bedridden and do school from home for half of the year. The one upside of being sick for Anthony was using all his newfound free time to learn how to code making websites, and just teaching himself how to use a computer. When Anthony turned 16, he ended up getting his first car. A 1989 Ford Probe would be the car of choice if you were curious. Anthony was able to afford the car by making websites for people online and also from the website he made called Smosh.com in 2002 which was originally used as a forum to communicate with his friends while he was still bedridden from the symptoms of HSP. A lot of these hardships that Anthony went through are what I think shaped him into such a mature and great role model on YouTube in the present day. Just from listening to Anthony's new content, you can tell how wise he is and his overall great sense of compassion for other people. But anyways, later in high school, Anthony would drive Ian back home and they would get pizza together and play Halo all the time, and those were some of Anthony's fondest memories from back then. Anthony never really clicked with the school subjects he was being taught, and he knew he could put so much more passion into other projects he was passionate about. So thankfully, when he started making lip sync videos with Ian on a webcam borrowed from his dad, the inspiration ignited like a flame inside them. Smosh.com started to explode, and now not only were people using the website from Anthony's school, but thousands and thousands of people were using the website all around the country. At this point, Anthony was still paying for the bandwidth on the website, and since the lip syncing videos they were uploading to the website were getting so much attention, 
Anthony was spending up to $300 a month just so people could watch and share the videos with their friends. Someone ended up uploading the Mortal Kombat theme lip syncing video to YouTube from them. And there were already views and comments that indicated the attention they garnered that made Anthony just feel so happy inside. As anyone would, Anthony was tired paying for Smosh.com at this point, so he ended up migrating over to the website YouTube instead for him to start uploading his lip syncing videos with Ian. This was right after the time that Ian and Anthony graduated high school while they were in their first semester of college, and on November 19th, 2005, one of the most legendary YouTube channels to ever exist was born. Coincidentally, the Smosh channel was made only 11 days before Ian's actual birthday, so I'm sure that's easy to remember for them. Ian and Anthony turned Anthony's bedroom into a merch store so they could make more money on the side while they stayed in college. After two years of college, YouTube contacted Ian and Anthony to see if they wanted to be a part of the first round of creators to be paid from ad revenue. They were finally able to make money at this point, and about six months after being monetized, Ian and Anthony both dropped out of college to pursue YouTube full-time. Some of Smosh's biggest hits at the start, including their most famous lip-sync videos like the Power Rangers theme, uploaded on the same day of the channel creation, the Mortal Kombat theme, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme, and Transformer theme. On October 4th, 2006, what I would say is my favorite series on the Smosh channel, Food Battle 2006 was uploaded to the channel. The concept of Food Battle was Ian having his favorite food, a pink frosted sprinkled donut, which wasn't actually his favorite food, more evident in the later years of Food Battle, and Anthony's favorite food, which changed every year but was typically in the shape of a stick as a sexual reference with his and Ian's food, do everyday tasks and the food and person that survives the battle wins. I remember watching these so excited to see what Anthony's new food was going to be for the next year and predicting who I thought was going to win. It's funny how I didn't realize it was all an adult joke that the foods were supposed to be, but you live and you learn, I guess. These food battle videos featured so many funny and iconic moments that longtime Smosh watchers have a soft spot in their hearts for. Furthermore, Smosh's other comedy sketches completely dominated YouTube in 2006 and 2007, and the Smosh YouTube channel was the first YouTube channel to hit 100,000 subscribers on May 15th, 2007, as well as being the most subscribed YouTube channel for a very long time. Smosh's biggest video to date was posted on May 3rd, 2008, called Beef and Go, with over 107 million views. But unfortunately, 2008 wouldn't have been the best of years behind closed doors for Anthony. When Anthony was 21 in 2008, he had his first of many panic attacks and it really devastated him internally and made him question his whole purpose. Panic attacks took over Anthony for five years all the way until 2013, and likely still every once in a while as that kind of thing never goes away. However, when Anthony thought about what caused them, he realized that his anxiety of having a panic attack was actually the reason he had a panic attack because when he tried to force himself to have one, he couldn't. This told Anthony that he wasn't going to let panic attacks dictate his life. As he was too strong of a person and he was way too passionate about his goals to let his panic attacks actually take control of him. Later in 2008, Ian and Anthony hired a production team to help them film and edit videos, and Smosh's popularity only continued to skyrocket. They hit 1 million subscribers in August 2009, and on September 4th of 2009, they uploaded another video in one of their most popular series to garner attention, If Movies Were Real. The If, insert thing here, were real series, pulled in monumental views and parodied many popular things about whatever they chose to create in the respective video. Paranormal Easy Bake Oven was one of the most popular videos that I remembered watching from back in the day. That was uploaded on January 14th, 2011, with more than 40 million views currently. Another hugely memorable video, Pokemon in Real Life, was uploaded on April 22nd of 2011, which is actually the first Smosh video I was shown 
when I found out about them from one of my family friends way back in the day for the first time. So this video has a special place in my heart and I would talk about more videos here, but Smosh was just so dominant back in 2011 that there wasn't one specific video, but rather all their videos would constantly blow up. So instead, I'll just be going over some of the broader events and things that happened, but if you want to see any videos around this time period, all of them are great, and I would suggest going on the channel yourself to see them. In July 2011, Smosh's channel first partnered with Defy Media, a YouTube network. Smosh saw their view and subscriber count skyrocket since, especially from 2011 to 2015. Smosh has already broken off from Defy Media for a while now, but was previously the number one content brand for the company. The company helped Smosh expand and appeal to a larger audience. In 2011 and 2012, Smosh expanded by having animation, French and Spanish language channels, and gaming channels created for them. Smosh also released two albums, If Music Were Real, in 2011, and Smosh-tastic in 2012. In October of that year, Smosh uploaded a video titled Ultimate Assassin's Creed 3 Song, the music video. This is currently their second most viewed video on their channel, most viewed music video on their channel, and the video still sits at over 100 million views. On January 12th, 2013, Smosh became the most subscribed YouTube channel for the third and final time this time surpassing Ray William Johnson at around 6.8 million subscribers. Two days later, Smosh was featured on Ray's show as congratulations from him where they took over most of Ray's reacting to viral videos on that episode. The same month Smosh announced their magazine, it first became available in July 2013 in 40,000 retailers across the United States and Canada it cost $6, and there was an app for digital download. The magazine received many sales. Earlier in July, Smosh was one of the guest hosts of Internet Icon, an elimination contest show for aspiring YouTubers. On August 15th, 2013, PewDiePie surpassed Smosh to become the most subscribed channel on YouTube when both channels were at around 11.9 million subscribers. They did a collab together a day later to acknowledge the event. A week later, Smosh raised $250,000 for one of their first games, Food Battle the Game, which was available on iOS and Android. I know this is going to shock you guys, but it was based on the Food Battle series they produced from. 2006 to 2016. However, there was some controversy around the game because Smosh asked their fans to donate a quarter million dollars for the game, and that sparked negative attention from various people asking why Smosh needed to ask for $250,000 when they were practically millionaires and could fund it themselves. Moreover, many asked why Smosh needed $250,000 for a small mobile game in the first place. Some people referred to them as scammers and two guys who were deliberately taking advantage of their fan base by stealing their money. Although I wouldn't blame Ian or Anthony for this because it was their parent companies that were controlling them at this point, which probably forced them to make this decision. In 2014, Smosh expanded its YouTube channel by having more celebrities appear in their videos. Some of the celebrities that appeared that year were The Rock, Stan Lee, and Emma Watson. They have had a large variety of celebrities on their Smosh branded videos and other media projects, such as movies, which include actors, music artists, professional wrestlers, famous chefs, and video game creators. In 2015, Smosh introduced actors because they wanted to create more content and have more personalities to make their videos more interesting. Due to the increased number of cast members and crew supporting them, Smosh got their own office. In July 2015, Smosh became one of the first channels to receive YouTube's diamond play button at VidCon. It's an award for YouTubers that reach 10 million subscribers. Even though Smosh might not have been the first channel to receive the button, they were the first channel to reach 10 million subscribers. Unfortunately, growth started to slow down past 2015 
and the channel's focus started shifting away from Ian and Anthony as the faces of Smosh. They changed their YouTube profile picture from a picture of Ian and Anthony to only a Smosh logo in early 2016, and even Smosh's latest album at the time didn't feature Ian or Anthony on the cover. Not only were the fans realizing this, but behind the scenes, Anthony was realizing this too. Over the years, burnout was inevitable as Defy Media would pressure Ian and Anthony into making so much content without taking into account how they felt about it. Anthony's mental health was destroyed, and as 2016 progressed, the thought that had crept on Anthony's mind for plenty of time now was going to become a reality. Anthony announced that he would be leaving Smosh, and a video was uploaded to their YouTube channel on June 14th, 2017, announcing Anthony's departure. Anthony admitted his nervousness of moving on from Smosh and creating videos on his personal channel, and expressed sadness, happiness, and anxiousness. Ian also seemed sad in the video, but maintained composure. Also, Ian said that they had been friends for 19 years at that point, and that they would still remain friends. However, without Anthony, he'll continue Smosh with the other people who worked at Smosh still. The comments featured many mixed opinions as expected, and the video ended with Anthony and Ian saying their goodbyes and thank yous for the good memories they had. The same day, Anthony uploaded a video on his own channel discussing why he left Smosh again, but in more detail. Since joining Defy Media in 2011, he wanted to make Smosh what it was before they were a brand owned by a company, which was Anthony and Ian uploading videos for amusement and being fully in charge of its content. He went on to explain that since Smosh was now owned by a company, his creative decisions were filtered into what was deemed appropriate by the company. Anthony proclaimed that he wanted to create whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, and be creatively happy again, and that being an independent creator would fulfill his needs. Anthony then said that he was scared that he was walking away from something thing he created as a teenager, which became a large media empire, as well as leaving Ian. He said that he never made anything without Ian by his side. Anthony added that he was also excited to work hard consistently in making his own content, which became evident as the years progressed. Anthony started uploading new content to his YouTube channel that was mainly just sitting in front of a camera and talking about various stories in his life, having face-to-face -face conversations with the camera about topics or vlogs. For about eight months or so, he was uploading this type of content before he uploaded a video that, at the time, may not have seemed significant, but he wouldn't know how much this new video would help him find his new voice on YouTube. I Spent a Day with Flat Earthers was Anthony's first video he uploaded in the I Spent a Day With series on February 5th, 2018. The series would, however, go on a hiatus for four months when he then transitioned into mainly uploading parody videos. He came back on June 18th, 2018 with the video I Spent a Day with Time Travelers, though, and periodically throughout the months, Anthony would keep uploading more and more I Spent a Day with videos on his channel. Other videos were still the dominant form of content on Anthony's channel at this point, but then Anthony began to shift his content more and more to the I Spent a Day with videos for the rest of 2018. It's worth noting that also in 2018, Defy Media would shut down on November 6th, so Smosh was technically independent until Mythical Entertainment acquired Smosh on February 22nd, 2019. This big change in management would become one of the later reasons Smosh was reborn. As far as what was going on for Anthony, the new year of 2019 just rolled around, and his I Spent a Day With series was something he was clearly enjoying, and the series was being very positively received by viewers. You can see just how much happier Anthony is in these videos, as he is being authentic to to himself and to the guests he is having on the show. Compared to 2016 and 2017, where Anthony was dealing with the nuclear fallout of stress and bad 
mental health that came with Smosh and the struggle to find an identity initially as an individual creator, the difference was night and day. Anthony's primary form of content changed almost strictly to the I Spent a Day With series starting in early 2019, and ever since then, up until the present day in 2023, he hasn't looked back for even a minute. The I Spent a Day With series is such a compelling series because Anthony gives the chance for many unique creators creators and individuals to voice themselves in a genuinely casual interview with jokes, useful insight, and respect which makes it such an easy watch for the viewer. He is also a large supporter for many groups in the LGBTQ plus community, making his channel a safe space for everyone to come on and be shown respect no matter how they identify. The man is just full of green flags to say the least. I think the most genuine appeal to Anthony's new content as well is just his large sense of empathy, genuineness, and likability, which allowed him to create a new channel that became bigger than both himself and Smosh and served a greater purpose. On June 20th, 2023, Anthony uploaded a video called I Spent a Day with Ian Hecox. It is obvious why this video was special, and that was from the monumental reunion that Anthony and Ian had in this video after many years of time out of contact on camera. Over the years after Anthony had left, they stated in the video that, that they sort of lost touch with each other, but this was the video to rekindle that spark between them. Outside of a reacting to logs burning for two and a half hours video, this was Anthony's longest properly produced video he has uploaded to his channel, being one hour and 13 minutes long. This is longer than his previous longest I spent a day with video by over 30 minutes. Needless to say, there was an insane amount of information that was brought up in this amazing conversation between the two. The video gives us so much insight over what happened to both Ian and Anthony over the years in Smosh. I would highly recommend watching the video for yourself if you have not seen it already. And quite possibly even a bigger bombshell to drop outside of this video was a video on the original Smosh YouTube channel coordinated to be posted on the exact same day. The video was titled, we bought Smosh. As the title suggests, Ian and Anthony now actually own Smosh again and are going to be bringing back comedy sketches on the Smosh YouTube channel, just like how they did them back in the day. This announcement was also mentioned in the I Spent a Day with Ian Hecox video, which is part of the reason why Anthony coordinated the whole video in the first place since they both knew that they would be running the Smosh YouTube channel again. This video was some of the greatest news I've heard in a while. It feels like Smosh has come full circle again as they are no longer controlled by their parent company and although Mythical Entertainment still owns a very small part of Smosh, it is exciting to see Ian and Anthony as the producers behind the videos again. Everything that Anthony went through has led up to this point. If nothing from the past happened, then this wouldn't even be a possibility. Anthony agrees that everything needed to happen the way it did in order for this reunion to happen. I think that Anthony captures the essence of what it means to be one of YouTube's greatest creators nowadays, and I could not recommend enough giving his videos a watch. Since Ian and Anthony have bought Smosh, they have released two videos garnering so much attention and support compared to the previous videos, and you can just see how happy the two are now that they're back.